Growing up, I felt like I was facing these choices between a black and a white. So there was this idea of being really Catholic or being really gay or queer. And I felt like I was having to choose between those two options. But what the work with Vine and Fig has helped me learn is that there's a gray area in between and that there's a bunch of beauty in this gray area. And so the work that we're doing uh, really worldwide has helped folks find that intersection of their faith and their sexuality. And this is my part of that story. I grew up in a really small town in Ohio. It was about 400 people big, and I didn't even grow up in that town. It was on the edges of it. It was a pretty conservative environment, as you can imagine, but my parents and my fam family were pretty liberal and really accepting and loving of all sorts of people. But even in that environment that I had at a family level, I still felt like there was a lot of societal pressure to act a certain way or to, to be a certain way to fit in. And I definitely felt that with my sexuality. I feel like on some level I knew I was gay from a pretty young age, maybe like eight or nine or so, but there was this notion that it was different and that it was something that I shouldn't acknowledge. And my Catholic faith, while it was really beautiful and helpful in a lot of ways, also led me to pushing that piece of myself down because it was something that was different. Uh, we grew up going to church every Sunday. We weren't super involved, but we still were pretty involved. And I was so busy with activities and, uh, I don't know, just life that I wasn't really romantically involved or, or dating anyone or interested. Honestly, probably because I had the inner turmoil or inner kind of feelings of being gay and had trouble reconciling that. But when I went to college, I met this girl and we were extremely close friends almost immediately. The people around me and also my own, um, I don't know, self-expectations of my life were that I would find this amazing girl and that we would get married and have kids, the whole American dream with the white picket fence. But we started dating and there was always some piece of me that was missing or not there, particularly on the romantic or like physical side when it came to attraction. For the longest time, I explained it away as just being like a good Catholic boy, Patrick, that I was just being abstinent and following the rules and the things that were expected of me for being Catholic. But it started to build up over time that that wasn't actually the truth, that there was something else behind it. It was just a convenient excuse. And it was kind of hilarious how easy it was for me to do those things, to be abstinent and to, I don't know, ignore some of the physical attraction that seemed like it should be off limits when talking with other friends that were kind of going through the same thing. However, I felt like I started to hit a breaking point. All of these feelings that I had had over my 25 years of life were building up. And I realized that I actually was gay. For the longest time, I thought I was this straight boy who happened to also think boys were cute. Um, but no, I was, I was actually gay. And so I had to make a really difficult decision. I was at sort of a breaking point with the relationship and with my life. So I decided to break off the relationship and um, kind of let that piece go and try to figure out who I was as a person. I thought that it would be really freeing to be out of that relationship and to be able to explore and, I don't know, figure out different pieces of me. But I actually got extremely terrified because I felt like I had two choices. Both pieces were really foundational to who I was, and that was my, my queer side, my gay side, but also my Catholic faith. I felt like if I tried to change either one of them, I would change who I was as a person. And so I kept going back and forth, trying to figure out how to play to both sides, how to be both gay and Catholic. And I was really struggling to find resources or anything helpful online. The only real advice or help that I found were from traditionally side B or celibate organizations. And 
that just didn't seem authentic to me. I had kind of tried that while in a relationship with a girl had still done that sort of thing and it felt really inauthentic and like it wouldn't lead to a life that I wanted to live. There was a time where I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night and went to turn on the light. I was living in this kind of older Chicago uh, duplex and when I went to turn the light on, the switch kind of flickered and buzzed. And when it did, it was 3 a.m. in the morning, when it did that, I remember thinking like, it would be really easy if this just killed me and I didn't have to sit here and go through all of this process of figuring out who I was and how to make sense of my many identities. It was that moment where I realized something had to change. I finally found some Protestant resources. I found uh, Queerology and some other podcasts and, and blogs, and they were really helpful in helping me find a way forward. However, they still did lack the Catholic perspective, but they were a sort of life ring to keep me afloat in this really tumultuous period. It's really confusing being a, a queer Catholic. Pope Francis has done a lot of great things, particularly from like a social justice lens, and also has the famous quote about, who am I to judge gay people? But at the end of the day, I don't wanna just not be judged. I wanna be loved and accepted and celebrated. And so there's a really, I don't know, there's like a non-answer there that, okay, that's great, but, but what else? Through a matter of online friendship, I ran into Patrick Flores online, and we got to talking about how there was this lack of queer Catholic resources. And we decided to, to do something about it and create an organization where other queer Catholics could find community. We didn't want to focus on overly theological explanations or do defending of ourselves. We just wanted to create space for queer Catholics to be who they are and to, to try to find some friendship and communion there. Something like Vine and Fig would have been really helpful for me in my late teenage years and early 20s. Having a community or an organization that spoke to my experience both as a gay person and as someone that was Catholic. There are other organizations out there from a Protestant or evangelical perspective, and there are also unaffirming Catholic resources, but none of them felt like the type of thing that I was looking for, and that is a true affirming space for queer Catholics to exist and to be able to talk to and find community in each other. Even though I found a lot of peace in my current situation, there are still moments of difficulty that I have. There are weeks where I wake up and feel like I just can't really go to mass. I feel like there's some trauma there or some, something scares me and I just don't feel like I can be myself in church. I also feel like there are larger structural issues. So if I were to get married one day, what would that look like? How could I incorporate my Catholic faith into that? Because I obviously can't get married at a, a Catholic church right now by a priest. Same thing goes with kids. I would love to share my Catholic faith with them, but how do we navigate the process of baptism and, and things like that? So while Vine and Fig doesn't have all of the answers, what it is providing is space for queer Catholics to find what works for them, to find how they can live uh, a Catholic faith that feels authentic to their queer identity. When I started to find that there was a path forward in this kind of gray zone of being a gay Catholic, it was not easy at first, but I have come to realize that I am more who God made me to be. I have heard from friends and family that I am lighter, I am more honest, I am transparent about who I am and my feelings. From a personal perspective, I feel like my mental health has gotten a lot better. I no longer think of what it would be like to, to not be here anymore, and I feel like my life is starting to have purpose and meaning. And Vine and Fig has actually been really helpful in that. It's a way to combine my identities into a way that feels like my life has purpose and meaning. And also helping other people hopefully get to places where their mental health is doing better too. I also know just in my core, 
in having a relationship with another man, it feels so much better and different than other relationships that I've had. We obviously both make each other happy, but we also both make each other better people. And I feel like that's really strong and impactful too. And so, I don't know, maybe there's nothing that I can point to uh, that's definitive or like some hard fact, but things just feel so much better. Life feels lighter and it feels like it's worth living. That's not to say I have everything figured out or that my mental health is perfect. I still have anxiety and go to therapy, but it's a, a different type of problem that I'm trying to solve. It's self-improvement and not identity-based in that I don't want to be here anymore. It's, it's working to live through a life that I want to actually be living. Thank you.